So Titan Season 2 Episode 5 Deathstroke was a very much so needed and anticipated episode for me. And this episode, which you can guess by the name, brings Slade Wilson's Deathstroke a lot more into the story. And it's kind of crazy to think that we're already five weeks into Titans now. And, you know, as they say, time definitely does go fast or fly by when you're having fun. And this season definitely jam-packs that in your face more than ever before, episode by episode. And this one definitely doesn't fail to bring more of that. So episode 5 only picks up 22 minutes, I believe it said, after episode 3, which I'm sure if you guys remember, left us with Jason going after Dr. Light alone, and then he got abducted by Deathstroke, which was all a part of his early plans, if you guys remember, to put the Titans in a crisis. Now this left us with that somewhat cliffhanger for a couple of weeks, as we had an entire flashback episode last week surrounding the tragedy of the old Titans with Garth, aka Aqualad's death, and I'm still not really over that, we're not going to get some more Drew Van just because I felt like he really flowed well in the show. I mean, never say never. They could have filmed some more flashback scenes. Maybe we could have a scene of when Donna Troy is just reminiscing and there's like another moment. But if we're going to get anything, I'm guessing because of what happened, that will be the extent of it. But before we go all in depth with this episode, guys, and break it all down, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already to stay up to date with everything Titan Season 2. And once again, hello to all the new Titans fans on the channel. I just want to say thank you so much for your support on the Titan videos as my review last week was the best performing one so far which is just insane for me let's just see if we can keep breaking the record every single week just by remembering uh, to click that like button if you do go on to enjoy this video uh, but let's get into episode 5 Deathstroke so the intro with Jason Todd and you know Dr. Light and eventually Deathstroke was just brilliant and it should go without saying just like I'm sure for many of you uh, whether you're feeling this throughout the episode with the Jason Todd scenes that we were all probably getting major Red Hood origin vibes here. Uh, Jason just teasing Dr. Light was hilarious and just seeing how resourceful Jason is already, considering he hasn't been a Robin like that long. I mean, I guess if you're getting trained by Batman, you're a freaking badass anyway. But Dick Grayson obviously trained most of his life. But seeing the way he just got out of that was really cool. And is it just me? Or as cool as I have found, you know, uh, Dr. Light's iteration, he really does come across as quite the impulsive dummy. This escape attempt though, as expected really, was short-lived as he almost ran into Deathstroke's blade because, well, when captured by Deathstroke the Terminator, uh, I, it's kind of easy to bet that it wouldn't be an easy escape. Now, this episode didn't have like a whole bunch of different things going on because it was mainly about getting Jason Todd back alive and safe, but this also allowed further exploration into characters which, you know, have also brought us many teasers this episode for where things are headed for some, but also highlighting the past even further with the sins of the old Titans. I feel like this episode was a lot to do with family conflict as we not only had the old titans arguing with each other throughout the episode but also some drama with the new titans who were squabbling with each other. I mean just tensions are rising for everyone in this episode and Deathstroke's plan is working. I mean this is all by design if you guys remember when he was discussing it with Dr. Light exactly what he was going to do stage by stage. One thing that I really liked about this episode is that they put quite a bit more emphasis on Ryan Potter's Beast Boy. It just felt good to see quite a bit more screen time uh, for Gar because he hasn't had a whole bunch as much as he is involved with this show. He also gave off quite a good performance as naturally he was really struggling with what happened to Jason. Obviously he must feel responsible and this kind of stirred up a bit of drama between the other young titans as well with Gar. I mean for example he was arguing with Rachel and even Rose who also hinted at a potential down the line relationship with Raven when she teased him by calling Raven his girlfriend. Now I don't expect that to happen like now like not now, but maybe like someone down the line. But as for Rose, she doesn't really care too much about anyone at the minute in terms of what's going on with Jason and how obviously the tension's rising for the other Titans. She's just more focused on going ham on some cinnamon corn puffs, which is, you know, well, actually, I don't like cinnamon corn puff, so I, I can't relate. Also, in this episode, we revisited uh, Rachel's struggle with her powers when Gar walked in her bedroom in a panic after what happened with Jason, only to witness this floating demon-like cloud above her, which actually cut him. And during the episode, we learned quite a bit more information as to what causes it. Now, I initially thought that after expelling Trigon back to his dimension in episode one, the show would adapt to the kind of story that where Trigon kind of has some influence over her, despite casting him out. 
out. Which would eventually, as you can imagine, whether it's seasons from now, lead to a potential return for him, which I'm not also saying won't happen still, but when she was discussing her powers and wounds with Corey in a later scene in the episode, she literally states that this isn't Trigon, I can feel that he's gone. This is me. So with whatever spin they're going for here in terms of how Trigon is gone now and how she has to deal with this new change, I still find this a very interesting story for Raven to undergo this season just with the struggles that she's experiencing with these mad new demonic-like powers. Now whether you guys watching want it to be more of an internal battle with Trigon, uh, which I'm sure some people do, or whether it's just, you know, after Trigon ripped out her heart and in doing so she changed, which some of you probably just don't mind, I still like the story of how despite the prophecy mentioning how she's meant to destroy worlds, as Corey put it herself, she can just choose to save them. And I really like the Corey scenes with Rachel, it feels really good to have Corey back just in the team dynamic now. However, in that moment when Rose, Beast Boy and Raven were listening in on that conversation the old Titans were having, because to be honest, they are always getting excluded, as we've seen from previous episodes with Jason really not liking that and getting pretty annoyed, but notice Dawn say, we've gone down this path before, we all know how that ended, we're not using Deathstroke's kid to get to him again. And I wanted to bring this up again because if you watched my episode review of last week's episode, Aqualad, I spoke about how it seems after Garth's death, the Titans, especially with that face Dick gave off at the very end of last week's episode, will take advantage of Jericho, who they obviously seeked out in the first place for their first efforts to get back at Deathstroke, in one way or another like he was going to be the first building block of their plan. I mean, don't take what I'm saying the wrong way, I'm sure they're going to be nice to him and they have absolutely no malicious intent of, you know, ending him or anything like that, but when it comes down to whatever happened to Jericho in the past, the Titans all feel extremely guilty about it. Now with this new context from Dawn in the present day, we know for a fact that the old Titans used Jericho to get to Deathstroke, and I'm guessing that he unfortunately died in a situation perhaps the Titans shouldn't have even put him in in the first place, which is going to be really sad to watch if all of this truly is is leading to Jericho's death. I mean, Rose did say, if you guys remember, in an earlier episode that Slade killed her older brother because he fell in with the wrong crowd. And I also pointed out last week how maybe that is true, and Slade was actually disgusted at Jericho for befriending the Titans. And I know some of you guys are thinking, what if this is Grant Wilson? But as I keep saying, I really don't think that Grant is a thing in this universe. I mean, it could be, but I think it really is just Jericho and Rose. And that's what Rose was hinting at, just whatever happened in the past between the Titans, Jericho, like I guess with him, uh, with them, and then Deathstroke. Uh, kind of finding out about it. This all reminds me of that scene we actually got with Deathstroke and Jason Todd later on in the episode, where we hear that monologue like we did from the character spot promo that you're probably seeing on screen right now, of how he thinks of Dick Grayson leading kids to their death like lambs for the slaughter. Now after hearing all of this, Rose tried to escape the Titans Tower, and I have to admit it was pretty satisfying seeing Rose rinse Hawk in that fight. I mean, as much as I love Hawk, he was kind of like asking for her to trade her over to her father, and in this other scene as well, it was really cool actually seeing for a split second Rose against Raven in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But as we all know, Raven wouldn't really stand a chance between, you know, Ravager and, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat. So she would have to bank back on her defensive demonic powers. And I really like how they added the addition of that demon cloud, which normally just swirls around her. But this time it kind of like, if you watch it again, maybe you already noticed, but it was like in the shape of some wings behind her, uh, which was, yeah, just a nice little touch. Lucky for Raven though, we had Rose going full on exorcist style, just snapping like all of her bones back into place, which was really weird, but like as we know, she has some insane regenerative healing capabilities. But going back to when the old Titans were searching for Jason in the tunnels, with at the same time seeing Deathstroke and Dr. Light watching all of this unfold on those cameras, I just love the difference between both of these characters in this scene. Dr. Light was like walking up and down, driving himself crazy that they hadn't killed the Titans after after four months of planning, while Deathstroke is just sitting there like a statue in the chair, as Dr. Light put it. When on the other hand, the way S.I. Morales portrays Deathstroke here is nothing but calm and collected. And as I've said before, all while giving off the vibes that he just can't stand Dr. Light's presence. I honestly just think it's brilliant how he can get all of these different sides from Deathstroke in just a scene of him sitting in a chair, but yet coming across very menacing, threatening, and just intimidating 
with his answer being to Dr. Light, no, like, this is good. Once again, though, Dr. Light gives off a very loose cannon feeling and doesn't really think too far ahead. He gets in his car to go face the Titans himself, and as much as I knew Slade wanted this next moment, I honestly didn't expect this to happen there and then, but Deathstroke comes out and ends him. So that's it for Dr. Light, guys. I, the, 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 goodbye, Dr. Light. Goodbye. So now that Starfire is back, it was just really nice seeing Dick Grayson ask her to help him kind of, you know, move forward with this new Titans group and not let it be a reflection of the Titans of old and what happened uh, to that group and how it just all fell apart. Since this was after hearing from Dawn that if Dick doesn't stop this little experiment, she will burn this place down herself. Now the thing is, I do understand where Dawn is coming from here, just in the sense that she fears, just like Hawk is quite vocal about, that reopening the Titan's Tower was a very big mistake for many different reasons and that they shouldn't subject this onto the new kids, if you will, like, you know, Jason, Gar, and Rachel, and Rose even. But I also understand what Dick is trying to build. I mean, this time, just as he said to Bruce Wayne in episode one, could be different and, you know, let it be what it was always meant to be like with that old family dynamic of the old Titans, which used to be a thing before, obviously, Aqualad died. Starfire can definitely help bring that stability to the group as she she really is the voice of reason. I mean, she was like the only one trying to be neutral and she was like the mother figure, even of the old Titans when they were all kind of actually contemplating giving Rose back to her father. Also, on a side note, notice how Dick said how he started up the Titans to get out of Batman's shadow, but with Hank, Donna, Dawn, and Garth. Now, this does make me feel that Wally and Roy weren't really a part of the Titans when it began. This doesn't rule them out of the future of the show, though. But, like, to anyone looking in, to all those little extra suit pods, you could just argue that they were there just in case they ever got future sidekicks, you know, to become a Titan. But as, you know, for if they were there from the very beginning, I don't really think that they're setting that up now. I think, you know, if any people like Roy Harper or Wally West are to be involved with the Titans, it's more of a future thing. This doesn't mean that we didn't have instances that they might flash back to in the future season of when, you know, Wally might have come in for the day because he knows Dick Grayson or just something like that. So at this point in the episode, guys, we're more or less reaching the end where all the Titans are in position after Dick came up with a plan to stop Deathstroke for once and for all. However, Dick goes in by himself saying how Deathstroke probably wants his pound of flesh and revenge for what happened. Now, this is just more to stir in the theory pot of what happened to Jericho, with even more just similar stuff from what we've heard before from Deathstroke, with him calling Dick Grayson a con man, preying on those weak enough to follow him. The thing that I just loved about this scene, once again, is just how extremely intimidating Deathstroke is when he walks in. Just seeing him on screen is just something else. And not every single villain can pull this off to this magnitude. I mean, even if they are a popular villain, it's kind of like the presence that Darth Vader would have, even like if he was like towering over you in real life. That's what I liken Deathstroke to be like in these scenes when he's, you know, walking up to Dick Grayson. This is when we see Jason, who is just outside in one of those elevators that goes up the side of buildings, and that Deathstroke has rigged him to just drop and let him fall to his death. Naturally, Jason this whole time is trying to get out of his restraints while we see this incredible fight unfold between Starfire, Dick Grayson, and Deathstroke. And as I keep fanboying out about, how amazing was it to see Deathstroke, the goddamn Terminator, you know, in combat for the first time on screen? I mean, sure, we've had little teases of him on screen uh, before this moment, but now we actually got to see some Deathstroke combat action, which was just really, really impressive. I mean, I always think the Titan stunt work and choreography is really, like, on their game. It was fairly quick, but it was still very impressive just seeing Deathstroke utilize several different things at once, you know, fighting Dick Grayson besides shooting you know, Starfire, letting off flashbangs and all kinds of other things. The effects from when Starfire was literally absorbing those bullets with her powers were really cool. I feel it's just a taster of what is to come. I mean, don't forget, guys, we've got like, what, like eight episodes left after this? So yeah, like <laughs> just this is nothing. But this is when Deathstroke presses the button and Jason is kind of luckily hanging on the side of the building. And this was really feelsy just because of the look on Jason's face as he like slips the grip as, you know, Dick Grayson tells him not to let go. It's just the look of, well, I guess what any of us would look like, but it's just, you know, you kind of let me down. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably putting way too many Red Hood vibes into it because as you all know, uh, Red Hood, when he comes back, is really like, you know, it resents 
you know, Batman, and I guess in this iteration, he might, depends on what way they spin it, resent the Titans for not trying to save him. And no, before anyone says it, I don't think that's what's going to happen here. I mean, I remember the internet was talking about after last week's episode, well, the week before that, is Jason going to die but through Deathstroke in this episode? I really don't think they're going to do it this early. And yes, I really don't think they're going to do it this time either, because this ended on yet another Jason Todd, is he going to die moment. You would have thought at this point, really, Batman would have added some kind of ability to make the Robin cape similar to like what it was in the Dark Knight films you know how it could just like pluff up and become like this glider um, and m to mention Batman how awesome would it be if we got Ian Glenn's like Batman and we wouldn't even have to see him in a detailed way they could do it like season one if he just swooped in and he saves Jason Todd but I also don't think that's gonna happen as well but a man can dream but yeah I don't think that's gonna happen but other just thoughts in that moment seeing Dick Grayson and how gutted I mean anyone would be but losing his grip on you know when Jason was about to fall I really felt for him I mean as well as Jason obviously but this is another person who is at that moment his brain is registering he's going to die that Dick Grayson feels like he's let down when Dick Grayson's whole thing this season is obviously like journeying to Nightwing but also rebuilding the Titans and maybe trying to prove people wrong uh, like Hank and Dawn who just don't think that it's possible to restart something up like that again. Whereas Dick Grayson wants to see this tower flourish. He wants to see sidekicks become, not sidekicks, but titans. And now he's just let a freaking Robin, his replacement, fall out of his grasp. He must feel like such a failure in this moment. It's just something important to think about in terms of what the character's mind Dick Grayson is going through right there and then. Concluding thoughts on episode 5 Deathstroke. Um, I thought it was a really sweet episode, really solid. I don't think it'll be one of the best episodes of this season, but it gave us many good things which I've already detailed, like in terms of actually seeing Deathstroke badass on screen for the first time you know actually moving with his sword which was really sweet but i definitely feel like with what they've got simmering in the pan for the present day scenes is only gonna you know burst on fire uh, in the episodes to come and I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying the pacing and it's interesting again that they managed to leave it on a cliffhanger That's gonna annoy people for sure as to you know waiting another week to find out what happens to Jason um, But yeah looking forward to seeing what happens in future episodes I hope you guys enjoyed this so as always, you know I'm gonna ask you let me know your thoughts down in the comments below But if you did get this far, especially if you got this far guys uh, Remember to leave a like on this video as it really just does show your support for the channel I mean you guys are doing an insane job at that already uh with the recent videos just so just thank you once again for that it really does mean a lot why not hit that subscribe button turn notifications on as well if you're into titans anything like this i usually cover uh, so i hope you have enjoyed the video and you stick around to stay for more but thank you so much for watching guys i hope you have a lovely rest of your day and i'll see you titans in the next video goodbye